Tom here from Orange Systems. We're going to talk about the Li Pao USB C or Mini HDMI portable display. Now, this is not the same as the Azua display I reviewed. And I've seen that in the comments come up a few times, and I thought it was kind of probably not too much of a coincidence after reviewing one monitor that the other company that makes the competing product would reach out to me and send me theirs. So I thought, hey, why not? Since I have both of them, take an opportunity to do some comparisons and see what the difference is between them and share that with you so you can make an informed decision. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. Now this is June of 2020, and this does have roughly the same specs in terms of what they say in their description here over on Amazon. Uh, mini HDMI Type-C uh, speaker built in, HDR support, which we'll get to that later, but just, I'm not gonna really demo it. It's just bad uh, for both models. They both have it to check the marketing box, but it's not really that great. It just really bumps and oversaturates the colors. But spec-wise, seem to be the same, both IPS panels and price-wise, they're both in that same sub $200 as of right now in June, 2020, same price range for both of them. What are they actually like in terms of differences? Well, one thing I found interesting was they have different locations of ports. And uh, that port over here is only for power on one side. And these two ports, mini HDMI and USB-C, can be used for display or power and display in the case of USB-C. But if you plug in the USB-C to my laptop here, it only powers the monitor. Second notice is they certainly are not based on the same firmware. The firmware defaults to uh, this rocker button doing volume and the firmware on this one over here, which obviously the on-screen display looks a lot different, defaults to it doing the brightness. Now that matters because they both suffer from the same annoying issue that once you unplug them, the settings reset for brightness and you have to turn them up each time. They both start at a lower brightness and if you then have to go in and adjust them up. Some settings do save. I don't know why that's one of them that does not. It's just an annoying feature that is suffered on both of these screens. Uh, the other difference is going to be, this is obviously a lot thicker, but it still feels solid just like the Azua one does here. But the Azua one is a little bit thinner with having this kind of indentation on the back uh, for where the panel is. And then I'm guessing the electronics and such are housed right there. And this, oh, that slide, <laughs> uh, this does not have that same indentation. That being said, they're both held on by magnets, but when you put this one on, it's actually a little bit trickier to find out where it goes because it doesn't have like an indentation to line it up. It, you can hear the magnets pulling to it. A little bit harder to define. Actually, I know I have it backwards there, so I gotta spin it around. But it makes it a little bit harder to define where it is and it won't line up as perfectly. But that's not really a big deal on nitpicking here and just talking about that they're slightly different. Also, the flip cover for either one of these is not compatible with the other because the locations of the magnets that hold it on and how tight they are to the uh, back of the screen varied with both of them. So um, not much of a change there, but a little bit different, just FYI. So it does mean they are clearly different products. Now the panel itself, we're gonna get in that test in a second to show as best I can. Um, please note, you will notice that oh, I'm trying to take a camera photo of screen, so they're not gonna look as good as they do in person, but at least you're gonna look the same and you'll see the same flaws in both when we get to that part of the test. Other than that, uh, the box is a, a slightly different packaging, but both came well packaged and have all the extra cables in there. The only thing extra you do get with the LePow is a, standard like USB 5 volt and a USB 5 uh, to C converter here. So cable to power it. So you got a power adapter in here. Uh, they both did come with screen protectors. I chose not to put the screen protector on for the same reason on both. They have a nice matte display. And with the matte display, I just don't want to, you know, add any extra gloss. I think they're actually pretty reasonable in terms of um, the, the non-reflective nature of it. I mean, if I hold it right against, I can find the studio light on this and 
I'll do it again with the a few less lights, uh, lights dimmed a little bit. But in terms of the matte finish on there, that's the same on both. Weight seems to be roughly the same on both, nothing substantial. Now the Illusion though, because the way the uh, bottom of this on the bezel, they both have fairly thin bezels. This one's thinner, um, so size-wise. They are 15.6, but it is ever so slightly. You can see the little amount that hangs over. Mostly that's just a difference in bezel uh, between them. And the illusion though is this bezel is the same on the bottom of both. It's hard to tell. And the reason why it's hard to tell is because they add that little line on the Li Pao. So when you're looking across here and when you get over to Li Pao one, they've got that little line. Kind of gives you an impression, maybe it's not, but for height wise, uh, they actually end up being the same because they actually have all the electronics housed in the bottom. So let's get to the monitor test because that's what you really came here for. I'm assuming was well, once you know the general specs are about the same on them and they both have the same annoying, it doesn't save the brightness problem. Uh, let's show what they look like. I'm going to cut the lights off here and jump to that part of the video. I have the monitor set up here side by side. I'm going to say that the Li Pao versus the Azua, eh, the Azua one maybe has a very slightly richer color gamut. That's a very subjective based on what I can see, maybe you can see in the camera here, but not anything overly significant. And I don't have the proper testing tools for uh, giving you the exact color gamut and details of that. That being said, uh, these are probably not tools you would buy in terms of if you were a professional color editor in photography or video editing where you need perfect matching of color and color grading. I'm gonna say they're good IPS displays, but they're not gonna be at that same professional level quality. Uh, and for the price point, that's kind of what should be expected. Overall, but they do look pretty good. They're both about the same amount of glare uh, with the matte finish. I chose not to put the screen protector, which both did include in the box on there to keep the glare minimized. The magnet on the back of this one holds up well. The magnet on this one holds up uh, well. And as I mentioned, I almost think, and same thing with either one of these, that a little bit of glue to really hold that on there because you can easily, when you're flipping these over the little covers, uh, they can fall off because they're just held on by magnets. So that's pretty much the same. I do not understand why they are able to save some settings, but not others, and it troubles both of these. Uh, every time you turn on, like I said, you have to reset the brightness, but uh, the Azua one making the brightness the default option when you roll up makes it a lot easier. So that will adjust the brightness on this one and rolling up adjust the volume on the other one. So I don't really get why Li Pao does that. It would be nice if Li Pao had the first option being the brightness seeing as I have to reset it. These both have HDR and I'm not going to waste your time showing you with the pseudo ugly HDR. They both have exactly the same menu options. Oddly, HDR is saved between power cycles and uh, just leave it off. If you put it on, it just oversaturates the colors and makes it look weird. Uh, I don't see any good particular use case for it. They look the same when you turn HDR and I don't say one's better than the other, they're just both bad. Um, I think it's one of those marketing terms and they suck it in as a menu where we just crank the saturation up and it doesn't look good. So my overall is both are good devices. Um, I have not done much long term other than having each of these. Uh, I've been I've had this one a couple weeks since I did the last review and I was using it up until I've used this one when I got this one for about a week, week and a half ago. I've been using this one at home just to see if I can see a difference. From a daily usage standpoint, both of them look perfectly fine. They're both good IPS displays that are easy on the eyes. Uh, and for their price point, I think they're both a good deal. I'll leave links where you can get these below so you can make your decision. Uh, but yeah, they're really, really close to being the same. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.